What you wanna know? What's going on, people? Mike C. Town here with another episode of What Do You Wanna Know, where you ask your questions. If I like your questions, I ask your questions on camera. Um, <clears throat> real quick, I want to thank everybody for sending me questions to answer. Uh, I try to answer questions that I feel would be entertaining for me to answer, as well as entertaining for you guys to listen to. So, um, send me whatever random shit you feel like you want to know about me. Um, you can submit them through Twitter by hashtagging WDYWK. You can put them on my Tumblr page, uh, which I will have a link in the description section down there. Uh, and you can also uh, put them on my YouTube discussion board. If you don't know how to find that, what you do is you click my name, click my name, click my name, click my name on YouTube, then you know what to do, better click my name. Is that mine? Has anybody ever done that? Am I the first one? I, I, I hope that's mine. I'm going to claim it as mine. It's mine. Anyway, yeah, so then you just click the, the button that says discussion, slap it on that page there, and that's it. So yeah, send me more questions. I'm going to jump into these. And, uh, yeah, here we go. First question. Mark Piers at Metal Fingers Doom on Twitter asks, Hey Mike, is there any time you've dealt with racism that really stands out, especially any time you were performing? Well, Mark, I live in the South, so I have dealt with racism quite a bit. Um, but I'm going to go with the angle here that you presented um, in, in terms of performing with my band. Um, I never actually got any racism directly while I was performing, but... Here is a fucking crazy story that if I wasn't involved with it directly, I would not believe it at all. Um, so, this was our second tour. We had just played a show in Tallahassee. Uh, we we're supposed to play at some pizza place, but something about the guy that booked it uh, didn't get the keys or something like that. So we ended up having to play in the parking lot. The show got shut down by the cops after like three songs, I think. So yeah, after that fucking horrendous show, we're driving back to Atlanta, I'm driving. We are about, I don't know, maybe a little bit south of Macon. Macon's about an hour outside of Atlanta. And I start seeing that we need gas. So I see a sign that says gas station. It says one mile off the interstate. I get off there. We drove for about three or four miles before we finally realized that we had not seen the gas station. So I'm starting to get a little worried. You know, we're out in the middle of nowhere, we're running out of gas. And then I see down this hill, there's this little shack of a gas station so I'm like cool let's go get gas there pull off the street and we pull into this redneck shack of a gas station I pull into the pump hop out go inside to pay let me set the scene here of what these guys are seeing when I jump out of this van they're seeing a super skinny black kid with dreads wearing cut off jeans shorts and a Spice Girls tour t-shirt that I had gotten in uh, sometime in the late 90s when I saw the Spice Girls live um, I go inside to pay, I go up to the counter, the uh, the cashier, a white gentleman, he just stands there and kind of just stares at me, and he picks up his phone, and he just kind of acts like he's on the phone, he just stares at me. After a, a few minutes or so, um, this little white kid comes in, grabs some candy, goes up to the counter, puts the candy down, the cashier takes the candy, gives the kid his money, and, or his change, and the kid leaves, so I'm like, alright, this is kind of fucked up, so... I stand there for maybe another half a minute, the cashier, again, just kind of staring at me while he's pretending to be on his phone, just... So finally I'm like, fuck this, this is stupid. So I go back outside, I give the money to Eric, I'm like, dude, this fucking guy for some reason doesn't want to take my money, so go inside and pay. So we're outside talking to a couple of these little uh, Kool-Aid mustache local kids um, for a few minutes, and all of a sudden Eric comes running out of the gas station yelling get the fucking van get the fucking van so we're like what the fuck is wrong with him so eric climbs into the passenger seat i climb back into the driver's seat and i'm like what the fuck is your problem dude and he's like the guy's on the phone right now and he's talking to some dudes and he's saying you know we're gonna make sure those fucking niggers don't go anywhere so i'm like all right well let's just fucking bounce we'll go get gas somewhere else i start the fucking van up and I start to go when I hear dunk and the van stops. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I back up, dunk, van stops. I'm like, okay, something is really fucking wrong. Here's what happened. When I pulled into the pump, 
what happened was, you know the little upside down U that are in front of the, the pump there to protect it from a car hitting it? Well, somehow, when I pulled in at that angle, that upside down U got itself in between the actual van and the trailer that we had behind the van. So, as I go forward, Duke is hitting the trailer. As I back up, Duke is hitting the van. So I'm stuck. We're back and forth, doom, 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 trying to get out from behind there, and we can't fucking do it. The scary part is, we look up, there's truck after truck after truck after truck pulling into the fucking gas station. So we're like, oh my fucking God. And I'm talking about camo trucks with fucking gun racks on the top of this shit. <clears throat> so we're freaking the fuck out. So I'm like, all right, I jump out of the, uh, the driver's seat and I climb into the back and I put a blanket over my head, okay? Eric hops into the driver's seat and continues trying to get us out. Funk, 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 funk. We're not going any fucking where. All we can hear is a bunch of angry redneck voices coming from outside the van. Dab, 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 dab. Knock, stop, shut, fucking niggers. Dab, 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 yeah, yeah, fucking niggers. So we're like, okay, these dudes are really fucking serious right now. So. I am in the back fucking shaking. Everybody in the van is freaking the fuck out. I hear Eric talking to somebody outside of the van and I can tell that we're making some leeway. It seems that somebody outside the van is helping Eric maneuver his way out from around the upside down U. Here's the fucked up part, man. I looked out the window to see who was helping Eric. It's this guy, skin as Red as, I don't know, just fucking bright ass red. Red as the goddamn Kool-Aid man, all right? And his skin is this just disgusting leathery shit. And he has one fucking arm, all right? So he's, all right, dude, go, no, go this way. No, 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 go, go no, no, go. And I'm like, this cannot be fucking real. This cannot be fucking real. There is a team of fucking G.I. Joe Klansmen rednecks over here that want to kill us. And the only person that's willing to help us out is this leathery red fucking dude with one fucking arm. This shit is bananas. So after, I don't know, probably like maybe 10 minutes, but it felt like two and a half fucking hours, we finally get out from around the upside down U and we take the fuck off. And I'm peeking out of the back of the fucking van at these rednecks. I swear to God, there had to be at least, God had to be at least 15. 15 dudes, a couple of them, full camo gear. When I look back at that story now, it's so absolutely absurd and crazy that it's almost funny but when you really think about it, when I really, really, really think about it, dude, that is it's fucking terrifying, man. Like, we seriously thought we were going to die. And we could have. We absolutely could have died. And it's just crazy to think that, like, there are people now that probably go through that kind of shit on a semi-regular basis. But for fucking six dudes from the big city, that shit there was a complete fucking nightmare man and to this day I don't fuck with Megan I'm sorry Megan I don't fuck with you I don't fuck with Megan if I need gas I get gas way the fuck before Megan or I fucking take my chances to get that shit after Megan but I don't fuck with Megan I don't give a fuck how much you love James Brown you don't love C-Town so I ain't going through your town fuck Megan and whatever that place was that was a little bit south of Megan fuck all that shit Next question, Aaron Face Cake B said, hey Mike, don't know if you've gotten this question before, but I was wondering what you use to clean your vinyls. If anything, same for your record player. Thanks, love you guys over at DHH. All right, um, first of all, sorry, but I'm, I'm really trying to help you out, man. Next tip, um, the best way to keep your records clean is to not get them dirty in the first place. So keep them in paper or, or plastic sleeves at all times, unless you're playing them, of course. 
Uh, try as hard as you can to not let your nasty, oily, dirty ass, dick touching fingers actually touch the vinyl. Um, the first thing I would suggest is getting what's called a, um, well it's not called a vinyl brush, but I guess you can call it a vinyl brush. It's something like this. Um, and this is something that you can use to just wipe off the surface debris of your records. You can get them pretty cheap. Um, always brush really lightly on the record and brush along with the grooves. Let me show you. This here is a record. This is the best way to try to hold it. Thumb here along the edge and keep your fingers on the, uh, the label there and just take your brush and just, I hope you can see this, and you just kind of go along with the grooves and just wipe whatever surface dirt you have off. Also, make sure you keep this thing clean too because this thing can collect a lot of dirt. For cleaning the record itself, you can get cleaning liquids online, but you know, my local record store has some, but I only use that shit if you're fucking lazy, man. You can easily make your own mix. You know, basically what I use is distilled water and a teeny bit of dish soap. Try to use a mild dish liquid, no additives, no fragrances, none of that extra oxy whatever bullshit, just extremely mild dish soap. Make sure you add very little dish liquid, as little as possible. You don't need much because you're not scrubbing the record, you're just cleaning it off. And don't put a big chunk of foam on there and try to wipe it off. And also, make sure you try to stay away from the label. You don't want to get water damage all over the label. so. Pay attention to that too. You'll see people like online kind of arguing about the whole use of isopropyl alcohol for your records. Um, I've seen positives and negatives on this. Some people say it's great. Some people say it's absolutely terrible. I don't personally use it because the soap and water method works fine for me. And I've also heard that the alcohol can ruin older seven inches uh, and older 45s, whatever you want to call them. So I just skip it in general. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a bowl of lukewarm distilled water and again make sure you use distilled water because I've read that distilled water takes out a lot of the minerals that can fuck up your records some of those minerals can actually enhance uh, and and uh, accelerate the degradation of your vinyl so I don't know if that's true I, I have to take their word for it I'm sure these people are a lot smarter than me I, I, I'm not a scientist I went to fucking art school I can draw shit I'm not very smart so make sure when you're cleaning, you're using a microfiber cloth, not some old dish rag, not some old dirty t-shirt, a microfiber cloth, this is very important. So what you do is you wrap it around your finger and you dip it into the water and then you very lightly go across the record. Again, go with the grooves, okay? Make sure you're always going in a circular motion while you're cleaning. You know, make sure you, you treat the record like the most delicate woman that you've ever been with. Touch your oh so gently. Don't go rough. Don't go rough. You go oh so gently. You know what I'm saying? Make sure, make sure you're grinding as you do it. You know what I'm saying? A little bit, a little bit of crotchical movement. Never hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? It never hurt no goddamn body. Make sure you throw a couple little lip bites in there too. A little bit of that. You know what I'm saying? Why you clean your records? That's sexy, ain't it, boy? All right, make sure after you do this initial cleaning that you make sure you do another cleaning with distilled water only in a new bowl. What this will do is this will get any residue that you have of soap that's left over because you don't want to leave anything on there because it could get in the grooves and it could fuck up the record while you're trying to play it. So if you do this and you make sure that you're cleaning your needle off, you can use the same um, record brush or you can actually get one that's specifically made to clean the needle. I mean, they, they do recommend that you clean your record each time you listen to it. I don't personally do that. Uh, I think it's a little bit anal. But as long as you're doing that on a semi-regular basis, maybe, you know, if you listen to the record maybe two or three times, if you go ahead and clean it, I think you're fine. But every time you do listen to it, go ahead and run your, your, your record brush over it. That takes half a second and it will help. It'll get the dirt off, it'll keep the dirt from getting onto your needle, and it'll keep your neck, your needle clean. Um, make sure that you're also changing your needle uh, the recommended time according to the needle that you have. And you do all this, man, and your record should be perfectly fine. All right, so yeah, so that's it for this edition of What Do You Wanna Know? Um, as usual, you know how we do in these motherfucking streets? Thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you. And I will see you beautiful people next time. Aight? Peace, bitch.